pop culture. Everything is permitted. Welcome to episode 85 of Everything is Permitted here at Wade's Comic Madness. I am your captain and host, Julian Brown, alongside my trusty co-host, the Man of Steel, Matt Reppert, and the Master of Puns, Brittany Tomes. How we doing? I'm doing well. Came straight from the grid. Greetings, programs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I watched it the other day, and then I vaguely rewatched like 30 minutes of it today while I was uh, doing stuff. Yeah, I finished watching it today. I watched it last night. Amazing. Yeah. I feel like it's better to watch at night. Maybe. <laughs> I fell asleep watching the original series last night. I was like snoozing away on my couch. That was <laughs> the end of that. Snoozed. Snooze. The, the snooze program. Yep. Um, all right. So this week, guys, we have a fun episode. The first of the new MCU Marvel series has launched on Disney Plus with WandaVision. Uh, two episodes, not one. That was nice getting the first two. Looking at you, Mandalorian. We'll be reviewing those and talking about what's next for that series. And then we're going to go from the future to the past, man, as we retro review 1982's Tron. It's going to be a fun one. Brittany's ready to go back to the grid. I never left. I <laughs> never left. I'm like Kevin Flynn. I've been there since I watched it as a child. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But before we get into our main show, Brittany, how can people go about supporting our show on Patreon? Well, kids, this is going to be an ASMR thing. If you want to support our show. I can't do it. If you want to support our show, head to www.everythingispermitted.com. Hit our drop down tab. Click Patreon, which will shoot you over to our Patreon page. There you can select $2 a month or $5 a month tiers. And uh, either way, you support our show, you get awesome stickers. And then if you're part of our $5 a month Patreon, you get exclusive bonus pod content, lots of really cool perks and things, and uh, get to join our Facebook group in which we chat, discuss, and uh, think of all sorts of funny things. Indeed. Indeed. Yep, yep. And I like it. I like either it. way, you're a winner. You are. You're a winner indeed. Matt, why don't you do our thank this week? Oh, I'm doing thanks. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we want to give thanks to our Patreons who we love oh so much. We got Billy Peets, the lovely Heather Repper, the still also lovely, but not quite as much, Rob Migliaccio, <laughs> Michael Cox, Nikki Vizi, Matt Moore, Cabria Wimbush, Rob Carter, and of course, the McClinton brothers, Kyle and Connor. <laughs> what kind of match are they having this week, Matt? <laughs> We're going to call it, a, what is it? What's the money? The money, money bag. in the bank. Money baby. in the bank. Money baby. In the there bank. we go. <laughs> I like whatever one has the ladder. That's that's the money in the bank. Oh, okay. Match. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they climb the ladder. They yeah, get the briefcase. Yeah, they the got to get the briefcase. Case. If they win it, they get a title shot. Yeah. I, I don't know much of wrestling, but what I've seen in five seconds scrolling through my TV, it's been that moment. Money in the bank is actually probably one of the most clever things WWE has ever done because it like lasts for months and it could just be such an open ended thing not to get too much into wrestling, but it's fun because you get the winner. And they carry the briefcase around for like months. And in that briefcase is a contract. And what's cool about that is that at any time, it could be in the middle of a match. They could just say, I'm going to challenge you tonight. But most of the time, it's like the wrestlers have fought. They've had their match. The champions won. He's tired as hell. And then boom, other wrestlers music hits with the briefcase, gives it to the ref. Yeah, exactly. John Cena comes down to the ring. And then it's like usually like one finishing move. And the dude wins the belt because he cashed in his briefcase. Is John Cena like actually is he retired from yeah, wrestling uh, he's no he's, you just can't see him he's oh, got God. he's got like he's back he's like what he's the rock did he's like a match a year wrestler now okay okay yeah because yeah. i remember because i remember seeing uh last week tonight with john oliver they did a thing where john cena just slowly is taking off his shirt and he goes like and by the way i'm the same age as john oliver and john <laughs> oliver's like yeah it's true he goes which oh shows God. that aging doesn't hit all of us the same <laughs> No, um, John John Cena is now basically just a movie star, and he's good. He's good at what he does. But you can so. Cena him oh, on the screen. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh god! Oh god! Okay. I like him because he's not like people <laughs> think he would be like a Republican dude, bro. But he is hardcore not. Oh no! I love it. Actually, I love that little commercial he did where he's like, "Don't be fucking racist. This is America." That's I, a great. I was commercial. like, oh. I do like I do like also the Dave Batista. Everybody thinks that he's yes. like a heart, but he the dude is like he's apparently very liberal and he's like, more than very liberal. Like he's he, like an extreme leftist. Yeah, he offered like a twenty thousand dollar reward for the fucktar that yeah. carved 
you know, the outgoing well, president's is, name into a manatee. That's so. an unfortunate misconception about, and not, and not specifically wrestling as a whole, but the WWE itself, because it's run by the McMahons who are Republicans yeah. and like support Trump, which is why I haven't been watching a lot lately because I'm disappointed in them and as a company. Um, I'm sticking with AEW, but a lot of the wrestlers on the roster are actually Democrats. But like it, it's it's, it's the hard. Jock stereotype. Yeah, it's hard for them to also talk about politics on their platforms because yeah. of who their fucking boss yeah. is. I like the they'd have to drop the elbow from the platform. I, I like the fact, by the way, that just mentioning the the McClinton brothers is basically what drove us down a tangent. I, talk I, about I could talk WWE. about wrestling for hours, <laughs> but obviously you guys don't watch it, so I can. And I, I, feel I, like a weirdo. So I used to watch wrestling, but I just don't find. And I give them all the credit in the world. They are athletes. They are, you know, they deserve. Mm -hmm better compensation benefits and such that many of them get, especially well, at least in the WWE. Yeah. And, um, I know, think so. they're all incredible performers on top yeah. of that. Cause whether it's the real wrestling or the not real wrestling, but, they're selling it. Well, but, yeah, people, <laughs> people have this stupid misconception that these dudes aren't athletes. Like they get hardcore, like sports injuries, just they like, get any hurt. Other like they get it hurt. May, bad. It, it's obviously staged. Like the winners and the yes. losers are all predetermined, but the stuff they do in the ring, people think that that's like a bed in the ring. I've, I've, I've no, been, it hurts. I've no, I've taken is. bumps in a wrestling ring. It does not feel good. It, it sucks. I so will. What now? But it's called. <laughs> I'm just getting no, no. so. I use up the school of hard knocks, yeah. kids. I will. I will say that. Uh, oh god! I just, actually, no. I just lost my train of thought. Fuck! Never yeah. mind. Sorry. Bumps I, in the wrestling ring. No, 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 no. Wasn't gonna. <laughs> if you get it back, let yeah, me know. But anyway, they are athletes and they deserve better compensation and they should unionize. Just saying. Yeah, absolutely. Just saying. Everybody. Anyway, unionize. let's get into some rants and raves. Who's got something? I'm like I'm. I have to think of one. I I had it was I been like a it was kind a, of slow week today. Yeah, week. I just had like a busy work week, and I don't think I had time for anything interesting that happened. Oh, so okay, so so it. it I I don't think I've done one yet. I got I gotta have a uh, Best Buy rant real Ooh. quick. So first of 2021. Yeah, I know. So I ordered. I've been ordering the Dragon Ball Z season steel books as they've been coming out. They've been releasing like two every dragon, two. Dragon, yeah, I know. God, the dragon, amazing. Dragon, but um, so I thought that they would stop. Um, around the cell games or when the cell saga ended, but apparently they're, they're still going. And I, the Saiyan man saga, which I absolutely hated arrived today and arrived a couple days early. And unfortunately best buy has this habit of putting these fucking steel books in just a plain, like oh, envelope. Oh, no. And, and so mailer. one of them, no, they don't, there's not even bubble. It's like, it's like one of those tight, like cardboardish like exteriors. Yeah, and so basically one of them has like a nice dent where it's like something just went doosh, like right in the bottom of it. So now I have to replace it and return the old one. And I think I don't think I can do it in store. I think I have to order another one and then go back to the store. Yikes. And uh, so I don't. Damn it, Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can you at least put a little bit of bubble wrap or something in there, please? Just don't just throw these goddamn things in the mail. And like, it's you know, like some dude in like their warehouse is like, oh, steal. That shouldn't bend, right? <laughs> just like throws it in the mail, and you're they, just like, "This is a thin steel book." It's, I don't even know. See, technically, I don't even think they're quotes. I think they're, they're aluminum. Not. They just call them. Steel yeah, books. they're yeah. they're they're like made of aluminum. I'm yeah. pretty certain, yeah. but but yeah, Best Buy, please, for the love of God, like make put put them in better packaging. Dude, even I've invested in like I have a hundred bubble mailers like in my house. Like I will start shipping your fucking steel books. <laughs> like, come on, people, <laughs> let's go. Um, do you have one? trying to think i I'll, had a pretty good week at the shop you can go ahead and i'll go while you while you're thinking more so this is gonna this is gonna be such a dad dad rave dad um rave. and like someone who's in their mid-30s rave. but like our in-laws my in-laws karen's parents for christmas got us what i think is like the best christmas gift ever and it's such like a domesticated thing but we got a dyson for Ooh. for christmas and like Holy shit, if that's not, like, the best Christmas present I've gotten in a long time. Yesterday, we were taking down our Christmas tree, which we forgot to water. And that just meant fucking pine needles. Like, and you're just, like, <laughs> everywhere. And, dude, I, I I got the Dyson out, and I was just having so much fun. And, like, Cecily was like, I want to do it. And Cecily was doing it. And I'm like, I'm 34 years old, and I'm ridiculously too excited for having my Dyson vacuum cleaner. Um, but it's so good. Yeah, we have it's a Dyson. It's so good. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Like I, I was having too much fun picking up pine needles when it, when it's usually like oh my god yeah and you're they're like, gonna this be is here gonna suck up nothing like, well and it's also like they're gonna be in my house for like months after Christmas mm -hmm. pine needles are gone thanks Dyson pine needles more like bye needles <laughs> bye yeah so Dyson love it it's awesome like ah yeah 
Sorry. I totally just nerded no, it's out okay. over a vacuum I mean, we're cleaner. all adults here. Appliances are <laughs> that's, basically that's the toys of adulthood. It's true. And, uh, yeah, you respect a good vacuum when you actually need one. It's true. As a kid, you just don't care because you're like, whatever, I'll vacuum because it's a chore. And well, then you're an adult and you're like, I need. What's also nice quality. about it is that you obviously have like the long stem and then mm-hmm. you could also use it as a dust devil because it has like the yep. little one. So you could just like do like the little corners and stuff by hand. It's just. It's I like the angle fun. brush. Yes. The, yes. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm in my 20s, but be, I know what an angle brush is. Be, Brittany's, Brittany's a. a 50 year old living in a 26 year old body dude man being i am eternal honestly being an adult means you get excited about the most mundane crap didn't you get a fridge yes Yes. i was about to say like heather and i got a fridge the other day and i can't tell you how excited i was when when it was getting a smart fridge it's not so that that was a little too expensive i'm not spending three thousand dollars on a fridge that says like matt you're taking out more tater tots or whatever (laughs) (laughs) it just makes me think of um Oh God! Some movie we put the tots. Oh, Napoleon Dynamite. He's like, you got some tots, and they're in his like little <laughs> I pants never, pocket. I've never watched oh, that movie, and Me I don't want to. I saw it in theaters. I think my aunt and my mom fell asleep or something, but I thought it was the funniest thing. Was it, I was also like in fifth grade. So since you mentioned your aunt, was it one of those movies that your aunt snuck you into? Or that oh, like, you so just many. go movie, 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 movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was definitely one for sure. We did not pay for that. We did not. The movie industry is looking out for the Tomes family. But I quoted it all the time. I was like, Tini, you fat lord, come get some dinner. And Napoleon, did you burn my chapstick again? I do I do Grandma know a couple lines this. from it, but I never I've said I never I could throw a football clear over those mountains. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Oh man. Vote for Pedro. <laughs> All right, we stalled long enough. I was thinking of the dance scene. Okay, anyway, um, my rant, my rave, my happy rave, because I always start with rant, um, is you know how my dad got me that flat screen TV slash my parents did combined? Yes. Because apparently it's part of my birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's awesome. I rearranged my whole room. I like my setup right now, so I'm able to like stream, and then I open my closet, and I just walk in to record for our other podcast, nice. and then I walk out, close it, boop, 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 stream, lay in my bed. I don't know. It's interesting. So I like the setup. I really like the TV. It's one of those fancy, like, Roku, Roku ones Jones. where you can, like, hop around and do, 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 do. Um, so, yeah, now I feel like my room is finally, like, where I think I've wanted it to be in my 20s because, like, I just had so much, like, I was like, this is my furniture from when I was, like, a kid. Like, it's just solid wood. So my parents were like, it's not bad. Don't get rid of it. So I just never did. But, uh, yeah, so now it's rearranged. It's looking more like how I wanted it to be over the last year. I still have a lot more to do. But at least the general setup is good. So that's my rave. I'm happy with everything. Did you get that that poster of Doug Jones up uh, over your bed? <laughs> I don't have a poster of Doug Jones, actually. <laughs> that needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of, like, framed stuff to hang up because I've started framing my uh, framing my posters because oh, I'm a real adult, well you know? Then. I'm a real adult. So um, that's, how, that's how it looks classy. Other, other, I have, like, a Stan Lee thing I have to hang up. Other rave real quick. Um, this wallpaper I have on my background uh, is from Boss Logic. And uh, this year, Boss Logic always does amazing. Uh, art he does great work, and good covers. And he doesn't always offer prints, but he offered prints of this, and mine just came. Whoop, and I'm whoop. like, I can't wait to hang it up. Woo! Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I have too many prints. I have yeah. to figure out. I also have my Ahsoka print from um from Karen Hellion, which I have to do. It's like our walls are just our our house is just a shrine to to nerd um mm-hmm. yeah. So. And I think that's all I got this week. Uh, other than that, like I just. I didn't really have a lot of time. It was working or like fixing my room and then like, oh yeah, I forgot. I told people I was going to stream tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then podcast. So. Yep. Busy, busy week, but Good week. Uh, Good week. here we are. Here we are. Uh, anything else folks? Oh. All righty then. It is time for. I'm going to do the ASMR. The permitted minute very softly. <laughs> now I don't want to be too loud because what if people are like, wait, I want to hear him. It's the permitted minute. Gently stroke the mic. Please there subscribe to our two dollar uh, volunteer for five dollars a month. We'll whisper more. Give us a subscriber. It's the permitted <laughs> minute, and we're gonna go here in five, four, three, two, one. Mr. Gata, start the clock. Multiple reports have come in that Charlie Clock. That Charlie Cox, who played Matt Murdock, Daredevil, the Netflix series, has filmed scenes for Tom Holland's Spider-Man 3. Fans retreated to their first look for the upcoming Mortal Kombat film with first looks at Sub-Zero, Liu Kang, Kung Lao. Jax, a new character named Cole Young, Sonya Blade, <laughs> and Kano. It's combat time! <laughs> 
In an exciting bit of unexpected news, Bethesda teased a brand new Indiana Jones game this week that will be a brand new story. Harkening back to the glory days of 90 Star Wars game, Lucasfilm will once again be taking control of with Lucasfilm games. Multiple studios will have an opportunity to play in the Star Wars sandbox as EA thankfully loses its exclusivity. Woo! Yep. In one of this week's feel-good stories, fans of Ghost of Tsushima started a fundraiser to help repair a real shrine in the town of Tsushima that was recently damaged by a typhoon. Headed back to the MCU, multiple credible sites reported this week that Chris Evans is set to sign a new deal to return as Steve Rogers as Captain America. In a tweet, Evans wrote, news to me. A D&D TV series is in the works from writer of the original John Wick. Time is a luxury you think. Fuck. I knew I was going to have to do that really fast because we took, we took it too slow on the last three. And I also three. fumbled right at the start. Oh, uh, I, I, no, I was no. uh, having fun with the it Mortal Kombat. It was worth it for Mortal Kombat, but the other longer ones we had to then speed up to make up. Well, I like that you I like that you like got out of the combat yeah, voice for the new like, character, and then you went back to Sonya Blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, for Sonya, I just kept thinking of the animated show. I was like, combat time! <laughs> it's combat time! It's like oh my god, So annoying. Um, a, a rare, a rare fail for the permitted minute, but a welcome. A worthy we'll fail. We'll do better. We'll do better. It was entertainingly week. a failure. It so was. let's it be was. honest. It was. All right, guys. Let's get into our first topic of the show, which is the debut of WandaVision, with episodes one and two debuting on the Disney Plus streaming service. So, um, we'll get right to it. Um, uh, Matt, actually, you know what? Real quick. Because there are Rotten Tomatoes. Stars, yeah, it, right it does it's have like Rotten time to go. So I'm going to I'm gonna throw to a curveball here, and we're going to look these up. On Rotten Tomatoes, WandaVision is currently sitting at 97% for critics and 82% for audience. How do you guys feel about those scores? I would say the audience score is probably closer to where I'm at, maybe a little below that, Agreed. honestly. Yeah. 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 I think the 97 is just because it's been a year since anybody's seen any new MCU stuff. So they're just like, oh my God, MCU. And well, then it's that's why it's 90 something. I also feel like sometimes critics can be a little up their own ass and say like, it's a tribute to the 50s. Oh no, 60s. yeah, that's definitely and that's, what's happening and that's, here. And that's, and that's what's happening here. And to, and to seem smart and cool and like, I know more about stuff than you do. That like, obviously we're going to talk about that, but like, it's a tribute to things like I Love Lucy and... But all we those all other knew that shows from the yeah, and, and, and that's and that's like I don't think that's being up up your own ass though. I think that um, the fact that a Marvel show, which people even though they've seen the trailers, are still not expecting to be fully that like much like those fifty shows. I think it was a ballsy move, and I think for the most part they did a really good job. So I could understand even even if the episodes aren't perfect, ninety seven percent just for them taking the risk to That's do why. it. That's why, like the yeah. critics are just saying, I, this is different than anything we're seeing right now. I'm not I'm gonna like, lie, like it. you guys know how much I love the MCU, but like mm -hmm. on Friday, like I didn't even watch it until last night. Like I wasn't like, oh my god, Marvel's I wasn't back. bugging Marvel's everybody back. to watch it. Yes, like I was like, okay, yeah. I mean, I was I was like, I'll watch it when I'm ready to watch it. I wasn't like overly. I yeah. actually watched it on Friday, funny enough, because I was like, all right, I nice. better. I, did, yeah. I thought I didn't know there were two episodes. Yeah. I was like, I better watch the first episode, the episode and get out of the way. I was like, wait, there's two. And then two? 20 minutes later, you're like, wait, that was it? And then you're like, oh, second episode. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's get into it, guys. Matt, uh, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on the first couple episodes. So I know that people are going to be like, it's bold and visionary that they. <laughs> that they <laughs> <emu> visionary. <laughs> and it's, it's that they emulated or that they did this homage to the old tv shows of the 50s but i'm going to tell you all this uh, and i didn't watch nick at night or any of that crap i tried to watch some of that stuff when i was younger i was bored out of my freaking skull and a tv show which at least for the moment heavily emulates that crap is not something that i'm like yay like it's i'm more interested in seeing what is happening with wanda and i know there's a ton of easter eggs that i'm missing because i'm not like a comic book guy and all that stuff like that and i get it but as a as someone who like and fully and here's the thing i acknowledge that i love lucy and all the shows they are classics you know just because i don't like them doesn't mean that people shouldn't like them and all blah blah blah, blah, blah. but at the same time though that's not something i'm interested in seeing in my modern day pop culture is these like basically and and the episodes are very well done because the, like the things that you can see is, for example, like the kitchen and living room shots. That reminds me very much of an old TV show set, the wide avenues and yeah, the, the and the stuff angles. where everybody can go, the camera angles and all that. Like it's a very in terms of its technical aspects, the show is very well crafted. But the thing is, 
I'm more interested in seeing what is happening with Wanda and basically her, like I'm assuming like her projection of vision because uh, something obviously happened, whether it's house of M or type stuff or whatever mm-hmm. else. I'm more interested in seeing what is going on with the story rather than seeing the, uh, the dinner date with the boss thing. You know, I don't, I don't give a shit about right. that because I know that ultimately it means nothing. But I feel like they just can't do all that in the first two episodes of the show because the whole point is that they're either in an alternate reality or some sort of simulation, and you have to see the simulation. It's like at the beginning of The Matrix, you want to know what's going to happen with Neo, but you got to see him in the real world first, then realize, oh, shit, the real world's not the real world. And you get those moments where like things start to be unsettling, especially for audiences that didn't know what to expect of the show, and they're like, why is he suddenly choking? Why is this suddenly happening? And I'm like... Because this isn't reality. We already knew it wasn't going to be reality. Because why the fuck would she be in the 50s? Why would things be in black and white? Like, even the trailer for the show showed that it was going to be mimicking these sitcoms. And it was going to keep changing and getting weirder and weirder. I didn't even really... I watched the trailer, like, once. And I was like, this is no way it's going to stay in the 50s. Because she's not really in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. So, but I feel you because I also... I'm intrigued by it. Yes. I'm fine with the fact that it's already moving through the decades. Because they're moving through, like, television tropes and different, like... TV esque shows and like moving forward, but there's so much like stuff that pops up that I'm just like, okay, we I know now that there's an outside world that exists. Glad that's like a thing that we know, but it's just kind of like, when is Wanda gonna? She might already know that it's a thing, and this is her protecting herself, and like it's her own mind, it's her own literally Wanda vision that's happening. Because I think this is a play on words, the yeah. whole point of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because it's not about vision at all, really. It's all about Wanda. Um, or. Once again, it could be an organization or something that's causing this to protect her or to keep her to protect like the rest of Earth or whatever. They're keeping her in the simulation. She's start, slowly starting to become aware to it. So either way, it's going to have to slowly break down. I, and I, it is in, especially in the ads that are happening. I do yes. know that we're, yeah, I did, I did like little Hydra watch. And well, Hydra like watch and, and Stark that Industries one made yeah. me toaster. Actually, like, because I was uh, working on stuff while watching these episodes because I was getting ready for work yesterday. And... Like, the Stark one, I was just like, oh, that's kind of cute. And, like, especially when it started beeping like a bomb, I was like, oh, that's fucking smart as hell. Because her parents died in an explosion in the MCU, and her brother and her were, like, trapped in the rubble for a few days, and they were staring at a Stark Industries bomb. Remember, that's why they had that problem with Tony Stark for so long? And waiting for it to go off and end their life, but it never did. So, like, shit like that, like, when it started beeping before the toast happens, they both, like, stand still, and then it's, like, beeping, and it's, like, stressing you out, and then it's, like, ding, all done. I was like... Well, and this is getting a little bit into Throwback. Easter eggs, but I have to mention too in that same scene. Yeah, I say all, that, all, no, 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 it's okay. All the there's another big subtle Easter egg in there when she puts the toast down. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes the sound of one of Tony's um, pulse yeah. reactors. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in his hands. Yeah. So it's like all those little things, and if and if you notice where all the colors, yeah. yeah, where all the colors are coming in, the red dot. Yes. It was a red dot waiting for it to toast. Yeah, and so, then the blood, and then the yeah, the ev- Iron Man colored helicopter. Everything has been red, which is. Very, but also very scarlet. Yeah. Bitch. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things real quick. Um, was that you? That going? wasn't my thought. Okay, I was so just you go then. You, you're up. Then, but, um, so my thoughts overall. I'm not going to claim that I'm someone who's going to be the most knowledgeable about comics. I happen to read some of these stories when I was younger, and I had time to read comics. That's the only reason why I'm knowledgeable, ish. But like now, I don't have much time. Um, that being said, the show, like I. Of all those older shows, I really only liked, like, Bewitched a little bit, but mostly, like, I Dream of Genie, just because I'd see them on TV land sometimes, and, like, I did a little hair flip, and I just thought they were goofy. So, I'm not, like, a huge old-school sitcom buff. I can appreciate the fact that they've mimicked it so well, and I could tell even with the writing, like, the people that wrote the show did it really well to mimic, like, that and also poke fun at it. So, I think it's very tropey for reasons, um... I am glad that the show definitely won't stay that way. Yes. Because yes. I don't think yes. it could possibly, like, for no nine way episodes. No it could sustain. Um, no. And even if it does continue, like, through all nine episodes, it's going to become less and less by the end, where it's mostly this weird stuff and then a little bit of, like, that reality if they continue that way. Um, that being said, I'm going to say overall for the show, I'm mostly intrigued because I keep, like, I see those little those little jabs and references. I'm, I'm just more so amazed that they're making references straight to comics and they're not poking at the MCU. Cause the one thing that I don't like about the MCU is how much they care so much about themselves. If that makes any sense. Like a lot of the jokes are recurring, but it's mm-hmm. like about the MCU. And sometimes they're not even funny jokes. It's just like, you get that because you saw this movie. Whereas this is like going back and it's like, this is from a vision comic. This is from a one, like a 
uh, Scarlet Witch comic. This is from an Avengers comic that they hope both happen to be in, but it's not even really about, like, it's just all these crazy things. And it's just been fun for me to watch, and it's just kind of like, oh, oh, cool. I must, to quote Captain America, I get that reference. <laughs> um, but overall, like, I... I am more so intrigued and I want to see where it's going because they could go so many different directions with this. Like there's already a way it won't be like complete house of M. Like there's ways that it won't be complete, like disassembled storyline. Like, but I can tell they're taking references from it and they're building and making something else that's going to work in the MCU. I feel like mm-hmm. they could even take it a multiverse way. Like there's a lot of different things they can do. Cause we're going to get into it, but like sword space, lots of shit is referenced. He even says my wife and her flying saucers in the beginning. And I was like, that's really, I know it was a joke, but also then they reference swords. So I'm like, shit, is this going to tie into scrolls and space and mutants because they did get the X-Men rights? Or is it really going to be like, I feel like it's too early to do house of them because the mutants aren't even there yet. You know what I mean? So this could be a really interesting bring way to, to introduce the mutants. Because if you think about it, what does Wanda do in the comics? She kills. She doesn't. No, she gets well, rid before of. Before then, she grants all the mutants wishes, right? Which is House of M, because shit, yeah, exactly. reality completely alters. Which is the thing. This could be an alternate reality, completely that she's accidentally making. But then she wipes out. Oh yeah, she all does the later mutants, on. and then like people aren't being born with the X gene anymore. Yeah, she removes all their powers, and and then after that. I mean, so and I don't mean after that. So, what would be an interesting flip, of, like reversal of of that story, was what instead is she brings them into existence. That like, might be that thing, you know. Yeah. That would be a very unique way for them to flip that story. And they're like surprise X genes everywhere. Yeah, which would make people either very happy or very angry. Yeah. Um, um, go for it. I have to talk about the the fifty stuff because uh, I did watch Nick at Night. I, I grew up on it. Um, I used to fall asleep to it all the time. So I dream of Jeannie, Bewitched. Lo- I love Lucy, uh, the Honeymooners, which I fucking love. Oh my Bang, god! Bang zoom up to the moon. <laughs> um, Jesus God! Yikes! I I love these shows. Uh, you know I I don't know all the all the I dream of Jeannie references in the second episode, even in the first episode, which I think was supposed to be more a little bit more Dick Van Dyke. Um, which I didn't watch, but I loved it. I think it was also very ballsy of them to stick, even though, you know, they have the tech to obviously not do it, but for them to start those episodes in the four, three aspect ratio instead of the 16, nine, uh, I, I thought that that was clever. Um, there's another thing I want to say here, and this is getting a little deep, but I think it's important. Paul Bettany, who plays vision Mm -hmm. was literally about to quit acting. Dude was about to quit acting before he was offered the role of Jarvis. And he thought, okay, Jarvis is going to be like just a fun, like little side project. Like little but, British voice. Yeah. But like it got, it, it got him a project. And then all of a sudden he's voicing Jarvis and Iron Man and the Avengers and all of this. And then all of a sudden he becomes vision in uh, Avengers two. And now he's like, dude, he's like a major star now. And now he's in his own show. So I remember when he was in Priest. Yes. I like that movie. I, I have loved to, him in that. I, have I, to say, I like that movie. I just think I, I love I love feel good stories like this. The fact that now he's like in a leading series in like mm-hmm. the biggest freaking blockbuster universe in Hollywood right now. And credit to him and also Elizabeth Olsen, who acted the hell out of these two episodes. Uh, it's to, also good she has more rain now. Yeah. Like, thank God there's a show focusing on Wanda because they fucking. Didn't do shit with her in the yeah. MCU. It annoyed me. Both of them did so well recreating those those silly fifties tropes of you know like like you said the flying saucers and my husband's so indestructible <laughs> head and you know glamour when, and illusion. I fucking lost it. Yeah, I fucking lost it because those are other characters. In they Marvel, are. Yeah, I was like, no way. I, I love when she's cooking dinner and like she keeps opening the window and then closing the bay window, like all of that. And the fact that it was the mom from that '70s show, and and it's so it's so unique that they're adding, you know, that they're keeping they're keeping that, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for, the the veil on like this '50s set, right? But then, like you said, all of this weird shit starts happening, like the beekeeper, which I'm sure you know more about that reference than I do because I, I, <laughs> I don't just know. don't think it's literally a beekeeper. Well, no, it's obviously no, not a beekeeper. It's her like. The beekeeper. But what is the beekeeper? And then I'll why is why is dude choking? And um <gasps> the, the moment No, it's not why, it's what was he saying when he started to choke? Because holy shit. Whew. So I I listen, like I I wasn't like going crazy, like excited, like maybe like I would be watching Mandalorian. I just was really into it. And like 
am I am I invested in the show? Yes. Am I am I like hardcore? Like this is the best fucking thing ever? Absolutely not. But I I really enjoy what it is right now, and I can't wait to see what they do with the the other sitcoms. Go. I, I know so you're like excited. rare to go. So hold on. Um, wait. Do you guys have any theories first? But I feel like that ties into everything, like the Easter eggs it's, and stuff. I mean, it's obvious to me that whatever's happening she's controlling because when she sees the beekeeper she just goes no yep and rewinds. everything just rewinds well, yeah. everything well when the dude's choking same thing they don't help him and then she says vision help him and then he helps him and the thing is yeah. why did he start choking wanda made him choke i'm telling you right now wanda made him choke on his food because he was asking when did you guys get married do you have kids why don't you have kids yet wanda has twins in the comics. Those twins end up dying. That's what causes her to fucking wipe out yep. all of mutantdom because she wants to bring them back. Like, it's a whole thing. So I'm thinking, and especially people are saying in the second episode, like, she's suddenly pregnant or whatever. Like, there's that thing. So I'm like, not only, like, at first when I saw stuff for the show, I was like, this is going to be her coping with Vision's death, whatever. But we don't know exactly when it takes place. What if this is her dealing with not only the loss of vision, but also all of a sudden she lost her kids or like something happened to her twins that she had in the comics, but like it now in the MCU and this is her, somebody is poking at that because you don't know what time it is. And then like, cause he kept talking about kids and then like he just starts choking there and she just stares at him. Like at first they're worried cause they're watching it, but they don't move. That's what kills me. If somebody's choking in real life next to you, you do something. And then she had to go vision now, like help him. Well, and and his yeah. wife like like crazily laughing. Well, yeah, as and she's well. like, stop it, stop. Yeah. But that's because once again, they're either real people stuck in a simulation, or they're fake people in a simulation, and that would be something the wife would do because she's just like, okay, stop, it's a joke, because that doesn't happen normally. Yeah. But anyway, I thought it was so interesting that he was asking about kids when that happened because I I like paused it and I was like, shut the fuck. Oh <laughs> yes, Jesus. Um, because that's a whole, it's a whole other thing. What I what I really liked about that scene even more is that you know for the the most of the entirety of this episode you're getting Elizabeth Olsen in that like '50s housewife like acting right, mm -hmm. and then she she becomes like Scarlet yeah, Witch Scarlet Wanda Witch, and she's like, like Vision help yeah. him. The way she I, I got goosebumps at that moment. It mm -hmm. was it was insane. I just like the shift that it goes because that's the thing. A lot of people watching it that I guess. I think the trailer hinted that it was going to start getting weird and mind trippy. Yep. And if you know anything about Scarlet Witch, which unfortunately the MCU didn't even really touch upon, is she has all these like at reality altering powers, yep. which they only show that she does telekinesis, which is annoying. And they and they show the they mind show a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like, like, she did it the Hulk. Well, and the, with the dream related stuff, yeah. yeah, like when she's like, "Ooh, here's your worst nightmare." Um, <clears throat> but them to see it like actually happening now, where it's just like, "Oh wait, now all of a sudden this dude's dying. They're just going to let him die." Like it freaked people out. Um. And there's a few good moments of that, but I, that's what I was waiting for. I was like, when's the weird shit going to happen? Let's go. I hope each episode gets weirder and weirder, faster and faster. Because then by episode two, like weird stuff happens three times. Yeah. And she's like, I can't even tell you about the first weird thing because so many other weird things have happened. Um, we're going to get back to that because I think, like you said, that, that ties into the Easter eggs yeah, a I'm lot as well. Yeah, I'm going to slow down because I'm getting but, so um, excited. But let's talk about, because one of the things in both these episodes that we get is a lot of symbolism for S.W.O.R.D., which is obviously heavily involved with what's happening or maybe they're trying to save Wanda. Who knows? We can talk about that in a bit, but from what I understand, what people are saying online, this may be a very different sword than we know from the comics. Any thoughts on this? I don't think we see enough to know for sure if it's going to be that different or not. Yeah. I mean, we saw Nick Fury working with the scroll at the end of Spider-Man homecoming, which yeah. is the last thing we saw in space. So immediately even far back then, home. Oh, far from home. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Homecoming was the first one. Yep. My bad. Whatever, one of those stupid-ass home ones. <laughs> I, I hate that the, the movies are all these, like, home names. It annoys me. I'm like, just tell me three. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so immediately then, in my mind, I was like, oh, my God, they're working on S.W.O.R.D. Uh, um, that being said, like, definitely the first time you see somebody watching them in, like, a TV and then it backs up, you see the S.W.O.R.D. logo on the monitor, which I was like, you wouldn't have a S.W.O.R.D. logo on the monitor, but I get it. They put it there for a reason. What is, what is S.W.O.R.D., sure by later. the way? I have no idea. S.W.O.R.D. is, like, the... the um, Strategic World Organization, or no, Operational. You got it. You're getting to remember, there. Research Division. Development? So they're research basically <laughs> like anyway, the they, space division yeah, they're space of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because oh. it's S.H.I.E.L.D. and S.W.O.R.D. And S.W.O.R.D., like, they deal with extraterrestrials, space threats, like. Man, they suck at their jobs. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're pretty terrible. They're made after the events of the MCU. <laughs> after HYDRA so. brings down well, S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, and apparently yeah, this late, sword, later. this um, sword's acronym is not that, It's though. not. It's, it's weapon, It's now. the Sentient Weapon Observation and Response Division. Yeah. Uh, 
So whereas original sword was... <laughs> but Vision's a sentient weapon. No, they made it because of Ultron. That's why. Like, yeah. It's so, got to be the sentient weapon. So here's, here's a question I have for you guys. Does this... But Sentinel. Sentient World Observation and Response Department, yeah. which is its there original. Go. go ahead. So do you think at the end of this, at the end of WandaVision... Do does do they use that to hand wave vision back into existence? Absolutely, yes. We'll see. One hundred. Well, yes. I'm going to say tentatively yes. Yes, I do. I can say tentative. It's it's uh, to me. It's going to go one of two ways. Either vision will be brought back into existence, sans you know, like stone in his head, yeah. or it's going to be Wanda finally being able to say goodbye to him. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be. He's going to come back to life, or she's just going to. Be okay with it for sure. Well, if we're talking multi multiverse of madness, which this yeah. series is going to tie into, there could be a version where he gets the stone back. Yeah. I just, in the background, the Benedict Cumberbatch is, runs by. Hi. <laughs> the best thing about this is if the show does bad, they can just say, "Oh, that was a multi like it's an alternate reality. That was a multiverse because like House of M was an alternate reality. Yeah. Like so many of these things that she creates because she deals with the reality, it doesn't always necessarily fully affect ours. They mm. can move yeah. past it, but. Sword was created pretty like later on in the comics. Yes. So yeah. since it's such a newer, th- like it was like Brian Michael Bendis did it in like the 2000s. 2000s so. yeah. Brian Michael like, Bendis. Yeah. The, yeah. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> oh, Brian Michael oh, Bendis. He's a <laughs> fucking genius. Miles Morales. Oh. The boy, he's doing all new everything. X-Men. All the X-Men stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll say uh, stuff's going to happen with Sword. And the thing is, uh, as soon as I saw Sword and then I knew like, when you see Geraldine also, I was like, shut the fuck up. That's not Geraldine. That's Monica. Monica Rambo. Monica Rambo. <laughs> She's going to be an agent of sword. It's all connected because Captain Marvel and stuff, like all that space shit. Mm-hmm. But the X-Men dealt heavily with sword. I mean, they even have the sword comic out now. It's a whole thing. No coincidence, I'll say. I, I do want to talk about the voice that we hear at the end, I think, of both episodes, where Wanda, Wanda, are you okay? Like, who's, who's doing this to you? Rhonda, help, help me I Rhonda. recognize that voice, but I cannot put well, I think a it's fucking supposed to finger be on Sam it. Do you think something. it's really? Well, it's, it, it doesn't sound like Sam. It's, it's, it's a voice we've heard from the MCU. Yes. I just don't know who. I can't I can't put a finger on it. But any any theories you say Sam? I, I could see Sam as well. It's yeah. it's yeah. gonna be somebody we know that because there's gonna be that oh shit it's so and so right yeah right. Well, I just like no the amount of people that came into the shop and were like was that Sam like that's just the only reason hey, I can't remember because I only watched it once I don't remember the if voice. somebody <laughs> British someone comes in was that Sam like, hang on let me call Kevin Feige and ask him <laughs> and see what he says. Yeah. Right. A lot of discussions. Um, let's get into Easter eggs. I obviously caught a few. I'm sure oh, you boy. caught a few too, Matt. Um. Uh, Brent, I'm just going to let you go off because you're a lot more familiar with the source material I'm than trying to think than if I want to start I with am, the most so. obscure to least obscure. I'm going to go the opposite way. So, one, they kind of announced this right before the show was going to happen, and I only know this because I happen to have the first appearance of this character, and we sold it on the shelves because of this. Um, but there's a character called Agatha Harkness in the comic. She makes her first appearance in Fantastic Four. She's a super powerful witch who basically survives the Salem Witch Trials. Um, she shows up throughout the marvel um and she's been killed by scarlet witch before it's a whole thing their characters are connected and you know beyond just witchy ways and when they have this character agnes in the show i was just like y'all think you're fucking slick yeah. agatha harkness agnes next door neighbor that won't leave them the fuck alone seem like she knows a lot more than she actually does the devil's in the details but that's not the only place he is what a fucking salem witchy shit ass thing to say who's her husband why haven't we seen him yet? Anyway. Um, yeah, that's Ag- that's Agatha Harkness. Okay. Yeah, it's gotta be. I, I They wouldn't announce she's gonna be in the show and then randomly have an Agnes and then, like, it's an, that's an interesting name. Anyway. <laughs> that's the first one. You said that, that, that now so that I'm you said that was, else go. that was the neighbor who was running, like, the, the, the little... The one that tried to help her out with, like, the... Yeah. The dinner no, not and everything. the one that was running the... The, the dark-haired the, the women. The dark-haired one. Okay. Yeah. Um, the one that like helps her like, and she's like, oh, let's oh the join. the uh, yeah. the actress who I think she I know I've seen her in Parks and Rec and she's a few, in like, she's, she's in a yes. few things. Yeah. She's she's a comedy her, actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's okay. awesome. All right, and she you. does really well in this role too. And I'm just she like, does. Ooh, you she know really Morgan does. Morgan that Morgan. is um, <laughs> uh, is that Catherine Hahn? Yes, yes, it is. Catherine Hahn. That's her name. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't have too many Easter eggs just because I was watching it just to kind of take it in, and I wasn't like sitting there going, aha. And I've never been a comic book guy, so um. For me, and and Brittany, you could just call me crazy here, uh, but... 
Depends uh, on what you say. <laughs> it's about it's about some of the the non color, but there was still color in the black and white. I'm not talking about the red. I just got really excited. I remembered another thing. It seems <laughs> like Wanda's eyes are brown, and that's not just be an effect of the black and white. Like I kept oh, on, col- the, yeah, I kept on dark. noticing that it's like a brown tone and not because of the black and white. I think it's because they're supposed to be red, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And in their grayscale black and white, right. it's making like a brownish hue. I just, I, I kept on going back to that for whatever stupid reason. It does make you focus on it. Yeah, And I it think does. that's on purpose. Yeah. I think that maybe even if she becomes more aware to her situation or she's allowing herself to actually become aware to it, maybe her eyes will get more colorful. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I did notice that like the shades and stuff were interesting. Yeah. And her outfit changed in the second episode to more like what her outfit would be because yes. she always wore the red jacket and the pants in the MCU and mm-hmm. I was just like and there's that, that throwaway line <laughs> yeah. like is it how I'm dressed? The pants? <laughs> yes but it's too late for that. Oh my god. Um, so. I'm try- yeah go ahead keep going. Whether they do full House of M or not with some of this shit ooh, there is a literal House of M reference with the fucking wine. Oh yeah. Yeah she's pouring the wine and it's like Maison de Métier or something like that and I was just like House of what? <laughs> a French name that starts with an M, and the M is the same as the yep. House of M logo. And I was just like, "Oh, let me." Yeah, see Yeah, people caught that. that in the um in the trailer because it holds it for yep. a while. Yeah. So you're like, mm. yep. And uh, oh my god, I'm trying to think of everything. There's so much shit in there. Um, them even being in a residential house that's just straight from the vision that Tom from, King wrote. Yeah. Um, even though the house number is different. So I'm wondering what's up with that. Okay, because, so I'm glad that you brought that up yeah. because that they focused. That was a well, yeah, big house number. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. They, they stick it there for a while, and it's a big number. And I'm trying to remember, but, like, what was the toaster number? I feel oh, like it was just, no. like, 3,000, right? It was just, like, 2,000 or 3,000. Yeah. Never mind. But anyway, I have a feeling that even if they don't ever tell you in the show why they picked that number, it's going to tie into, like, the Something, whole right? some phase four shit. Because yeah. they keep saying all this connects to Multiverse of Madness, so I'm like, do we have to wait for that to know what that number is? Um... They do rec- uh, reference uh, Agatha Harkness. It's like Auntie A's, the food in the grocery store or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's her because it's Auntie A. It's like Agnes. Um, when they show that whole opening sequence when like Vision's getting ready to like go to work, he's like, do, 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 do. And the floorboards is the helmet to this uh, bad guy who's oh, in I the comics that it. shows up in the Vision storyline and Vision kills him. Okay. So like it's the little four pronged like evil hat forgetting the name of the character oh the reaper grim reaper oh yeah that's it and then um there's so many good ones oh the cow bova's milk that's the name of the cow that's there when she gives birth in the comics like it's a whole thing it's all little bits and connected oh. this is gonna be so fun every shit. week because yeah a lot of yeah. this is even going right on yeah. say i'm just like yep yeah, that's a cow but there's a lot <laughs> in like the dialogue as well i'm just trying i wish i would have wrote these down i don't know why i wasn't prepared but anyway beekeeper we'll get to that so the beekeeper that pops out, the dude's literally like surrounded by bees. Yeah. But that being said, the beekeeper outfit, it's like a moniker or a name they give to like the scientists at AIM because their outfits look like beekeepers. So even though the dude showed up and literally was surrounded by bees, that could have been once again, either her mind recognizing, wait, these outside people are here. I'm going to shut it out. Or it's those people actually like they're the ones ever in the simulation. That dude was legit coming in to inspect, but wasn't actually surrounded by bees. Um, but either way, she's like beekeepers keep AIM out. And mm. AIM, apparently, I don't remember anything about Iron Man 2 for some reason, or Iron Man 3, whatever fucking movie. Um, they weren't too memorable. I haven't rewatched in a while. But, like, their version of AIM was different. Yeah. But the main thing that made me definitely confirm before the Beekeeper even appeared, and, like, my mind was already set on AIM, was the fact that the advertisement was about Baron Von Strucker and the Time Watch. Like the, Which had I the Hydra logo. Yeah, yeah, and it had the Hydra logo, but even just hearing it, as soon as I heard them say, like, Strucker Watch, I was like, what? Because he created AIM in the comics. and um, He's also Yeah, he like was killed dead. in the MCU. Yeah, he yes, was killed but in to Avengers be fair, too. even... Um, what the fuck was his name? The, remember the Nazi that was in the computer? Yeah, oh, uh, that's who I Zola. thought it was. Zola. Zola. Yeah, it that's who I thought Zima. it was at first when they said Strucker. I'm like, wait, yeah. was that the dude? Like, I am not German, exactly. I am Swiss. Swiss. I will say Nazis never really die in the MCU. True. So let's True. be honest. <laughs> like, even Red Skull was fucking just floating around 
Yeah. That's another thing. Eating but rocks anyway. or something. He's like, oh, I, can, I have to float around and never have what I need. Like, it's, shut up. Oh, Steve, welcome um, back. With I do, that love, I do love Hugo, game. though. Oh, my God. No, I just, I watched it. Re- I do have an appreciation <laughs> for it. I'm just, like, annoyed that people think it's, like, the pinnacle and the greatest comic movie ever made. I'm just like, it's not, though. It was a fun event. It was a great closing to a 10-year arc. Anyway, moving on. Damn, all right. Anyway, right. aim, beekeeper, stricker. The fact that he says, like, that there's still time for him to come back. Like it's a whole like hidden message where you're like, Oh my God, it means he's not really dead. Cause I guess my coworker told me that Ultron kills him in the other, I don't remember. I don't, Ultron kills I don't know too. if it was an age of Ultron or it. Well, was it Strucker just get like, that's the beginning of the movie where the Avengers attack his base. Oh, that was the, you yeah. Know, okay. And then I think Ultron and that's does where they kill find him. That's where they find Bucky, one. Right? No, 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 no. That's um, where they find uh, the staff. Loki oh, the staff. staff. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I haven't rewatched Age of Ultron, so I apologize. Yeah. I feel like if I do, I'll. There's probably a lot more. more in there. But anyway, um, he's probably not dead because time. We shall but see. But that ad, because the ad got more intense. The first one, I was like, I get it. It's just Starks. And then that one, I was like, Yeah. Oh, he's also the one that. Didn't he have Wanda and. He, the he's yeah, the he one who was experimenting on Wanda, mm. and yes, yes. Yes. So it's all stricken together right Ooh, now. Oh, boy. Oh, Stru- boy. Um, oh I, I, before we give our rating, there's just one more scene that I absolutely want to, that I loved. It's when Vision got, uh, gum drunk. No. Um, I loved the whole, like, doing the illusions, and, uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. I loved that scene. I loved it. Let's get... Oh, but I liked how they used Help Me Rhonda, and then, because it, when it distorts, it sounds like, help me, Wanda, help, help mm, me, Wanda. Like, yeah. Ooh, I love that part. And the, the main, the mean lady of the, the neighborhood is, uh, what's her face from Buffy? The... It must be bunny. Oh, yeah, it's yes. her. And she was a demon, so I don't trust her. I you know totally what I mean? recognized her, and I was like, oh, my God. I know. God. It took me. I had to look it up after the episode. Bunnies. It's like Emma something. But. Before we let Brittany just go off and take over the show, let's get Sorry. into. No, it's okay. I'm glad we did it. Let's get into our episode ratings of episodes one and two out of five lobsters. I give it a four out of five because uh, it's not one of those things where, you know, normally if I watch a show and like the first two episodes are like really amazing or like I want everybody to watch it, you know, mm-hmm. I tell you about it and I'm like, you got to watch this show. It's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I didn't feel that way about this one. And I watched the first two episodes and I was just kind of like interesting because like um, I just want to see like exactly what they're doing because I was hoping it was just going to be purely one thing. Mm-hmm. But now seeing all the threads they keep like putting out, I'm just like, oh man, they could like definitely take it multiverse way. They could... Add a little house of M. Are the mutants going to show up? Are they not? Did she have her kids yet? Did they die? Or is she about to have her kids? And this is like a premonition because this is so fucking Wanda. I, so I, like, I oh. have too many things. Go ahead. I, no, I feel like them doing with like the going with dead kids is a little too real and too dark for the MCU and for Disney. Which is why I think it might be like either she's recognizing that in another reality she lost her kids, or it might happen in the future, and mm. it's like her brain being like, oh fuck, like how Tony was so messed up. Premonition about. Thanos and like the end of the world and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I will say the reason I don't give it a five out of five is because I don't think anything that amazing happens in the first two episodes that like I hope this, I, I know the show will get better, um, but I'm more so intrigued to see exactly where it will go. So I know a lot of people are probably were like, oh, Brittany was like, oh, look at this reference. It's going to be five <laughs> out of five. But I say nay. nay. Nay, good sir. Unless I see some fucking mutants, then I'm getting <laughs> boom, boom, boom. One for I, I, I have an idea how they could do mutants in the MCU, but anyway. How? Let's hear it. So so basically, you base it around Thanos' to snap because they said it's radiation that it gives off so the people that reappear, you could say a bunch of them have Had ability. The next year. Yeah, mm. like art. Yeah, it's too easy. I know it's too easy, but guess what? This is Disney. I They're know. all about You're going right. easy, baby. I mean, listen, Deadpool 3 is coming in. It's going to be rated R. I think the, that's going to throw they, a wrench in it anyway. The fact that they ever included Scarlet Witch and her brother just meant that mutants were always going to come because she is they literally the pinnacle it. Omega level mutant. They retconned. I know because they gave her normal parents. Whoa. No, no, they retconned <laughs> in, in one of the Marvel books, like the the companions, as being canon. That like it wasn't uh, from the staff; it was like they actually had powers. They're, I don't know. They're they're trying to make your the mutants basically. Matt, you're reading. Do um, it. so I will give it a three point seven five because Damn, I, right I'll by my it. score. Yeah, the like so here's here so here's the thing. I I watch WandaVision purely as a non comic book outsider because I. You know, I'm never going to get most of the references because I was never a heavy comic book reader. 
So I have to watch and judge the show solely on its merits. And as I said, I don't like that 50s and 60s yeah. television show crap. I know that there's references aplenty and everything, but I'm more interested in what is happening with Wanda and everything. You're and like, who cares about the magic competition? Let's yeah, go. I, don't, I don't care about Vision somehow apparently having gears inside of his stomach that gum gets caught up in, which I, I know it's a, just a funny little thing they did. But Oh, yeah, Glamour and Illusion. I didn't even bring them up. <laughs> Actual a couple a magician couple they know that do that shit. So yeah. anyway, it was a small reference. But yeah, so once it, like and I give the show credit, it's it's very well made. I've, you know, I know that they t- have a lot of love for the comic sources because of all the references and whatnot, and you know the way it's filmed and shot and everything on a technical level, it's very impressive. I'm curious to see where they go with the story, but as I said, the '50s and '60s TV show stuff just doesn't do it for me. Oh, I, I remembered another thing, but I'll let Julian go first. <laughs> do you think, because when I go, I'm wrapping this up. Okay, so cool. Do it. Um, when I was upstairs working yesterday, um, there was we were talking about like a bunch of other things and you know people that have either read or watched more. Um, I think a lot of people that have only seen the MCU, I understand their confusion towards it because once again, like I wasn't expecting it to reference the comics as much as it did, and I was pleasantly surprised. But it's kind of a weird choice for them. But... A lot of people were discussing, since we don't know exactly what time or, like, reality or whatever this is taking place, and some people are like, what if this is when Thanos snapped, and it's that period of time they were missing and disappeared, and or this is, like, them in the Soul Gem? Because I remember for the longest time we thought we were going to see inside the Soul Gem, especially when they, like, mm-hmm. killed Gamora, and I was just like, well, she might still be alive in the Soul Gem, and then they, like, I, didn't I, bring her back, and I was like, that's stupid. I, yeah, I would say it's not Soul Gem yeah. because obviously there's a, an agency watching her yeah. inside but this, this, what she's doing. But this doing. can be, like, wherever they're at when, like, mm. they, you know what I mean? Like, he destroyed the universe, but, like, that's only one reality that he did. Like, so it's just interesting. I heard so many theories, but I wanted to mention it in case no, I like anything that. comes up later I like on. that. Just have Josh Brolin show up as, like, a neighbor yeah, right. in the, no, <laughs> that. No. That would be awesome. Like, and it's just, she, Wanda just Hi, hates neighbor. him for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, he, and she's like, you took everything from me. And he's, like, mowing his lawn. He's like, I don't know what you mean. I don't even know who you are. Just like, hey, Wanda, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you took everything from me. I don't know what you mean. Do you want some grass going? seed? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I would um, hate it if that happened. I'd be like, get the fuck out. Brittany B, thanks. I hate it. I like Josh Brolin. He did a great job. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm going to give this a 3.8 out of 5. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Getting to oh, I was always going to do a 3.8. And I heard a 3.7. I was like, damn you. Um. 3.8 out of 5. I didn't watch it immediately. I wasn't excited to watch it immediately. I was always going to watch it. But it wasn't just like, oh, my God, I can't wait till Karen gets home. We have to watch it. I waited till like yesterday afternoon. Um. After the episodes were done. I was intrigued. I want more, but it's not like after watching an episode of the Mandalorian or Star Trek discovery where I'm like, Holy shit. Like, why can't I put the needle in my arm right now? Like, give it to me. (laughs) Give me the, the IV. I'm like, no, I'm good till next Friday. Like, I think it's smart that they're doing the weekly model for this one because I'm like, I can wait and it lets people develop theories weekly. Yes, I agree with that as well. Like so um, usually, uh, you know, we haven't done it in a while, but uh, we, we could have done this, but we're not. For Are You Still Watching? We'll just say out of these two episodes, I mean, I'm obviously still watching. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. is just because yeah. you want to see what they're doing. With exactly. It. So uh, WandaVision airs every Friday on Disney Plus. So uh, I got a few days to wait for for the next one there. Uh, and, and we're going to wander. What happens? We are. Oh, ooh, ooh, man. I just need one. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Even though I kind of <laughs> like this one, I, I still give <laughs> you a beer. Partly I, because it was right. There. I certainly hope the vision for the show is going to be good. Yes! Mother of God. If not, Julian's going to give the sword. <laughs> uh, I wish I could have said axe. <laughs> I'm done. It's fine. Okay, guys, let's move on to our second uh, retro review in two weeks here. Uh, last week, we reviewed Tron Legacy. This week, we're going all the way back to 1982 before I think any of us were born. You? Yeah. You were I was born in 1982. Yeah. The best birth yeah, year of movies ever. ever. Um, Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> with Tron, the original starring Jeff Bridges. And I am not on my game today. Because I'm vibing and Bruce thriving Bruce Boxler. Today. Yeah, you, you are vibing. Because I was like, boom, references, boom, references. a movie I love. Uh, and as always, we go to our Rotten Tomato score for Tron, which is certified fresh. <laughs> not that that really matters these days, but it is certified fresh. Uh, 72% uh, audience and 69%. Uh, sorry, 72% critic and 69% audience. I will say it wasn't certified fresh back when I watched it. <laughs> the 20-year anniversary. 
Oh, wait, was it? <laughs> no, I don't know. It, I, that's the tw- like 25th anniversary edition, I think, is the DVD I have or some shit. Yeah. Anyway, I was just going to say it wasn't fresh then, but it's getting fresher now. <laughs> uh, do we do we feel that this is uh, these are accurate? Probably scores? around there. It's, yeah. I give it 100%. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be kidding. a little less kind. Um, I, th- I think this could probably be somewhere in like that, I don't know. 50 to 65 percent no oh my definitely not at least 80 percent oh man because um, the 80s we will we will get into it Brittany. this is this is your your baby this is your movie yep so uh why don't you hit us my, with some my little program some initial thoughts <laughs> on on tron the original so you had some choice words saying that this plot is uh what was it incoherent incoherent which i actually pulled from wikipedia but agreed with Mm. Mm. i don't think i agree with that it has a very basic plot i will say what makes it probably seem incoherent is the fact that they throw in so much extra shit during the film that you're just kind of like now we're dealing with this in cyberspace now this is happening now this and then you're like oh yeah that's right we're just trying to take down like the mcp why why are there elders on the grave and then you try to remember by the time it ends you're like why did they want to take down the mcp again oh yeah because it was preventing him from proving that this company stole all of his gaming ideas that's why which i honestly when you think about that ai (laughs) well i mean it happens a lot it had happened and it was a, a big idea in the 80s to be like oh man all these new fangled arcades are happening what if somebody comes up with the these ideas and someone steals it that being said, I know that when Disney made this film, they definitely didn't do it for the plot. So I'm not going to staunchly defend it. I will just say that it has a very basic plot that definitely other movies have done probably better and copied many times since then. Um, but why I love this film is all the attempts at the magical technical wonders of digital stuff. Because I know it looks very basic now. You can literally see rudimentary forms, even in the light cycle races, where you're just like, oh my god. But at the time, it took like months just to render frames of these things. And the fact is, doing those scenes, they had to like hand do... Like things now, we can just point to like an area on a grid and be like, okay, this is the y-axis, z, x, whatever. And you like find those points and you just input them in the computer. And you can set a program where it'll then render these things to happen, right? You can just build the model of the bike and then render the thing to happen. People had to hand do all of that, literally by hand, finding out the coordinates, putting in the next frame, doing the coordinates next frame. It took forever just to do the light cycle race scenes. Even the beginning where they open up and it looks like a circuit board and it becomes a city. Like, this is shit that people couldn't even believe. So, like, as far as what they, we wouldn't have a lot of the stuff we had today if it wasn't for at least people attempting with Tron, as good or bad as it may have done in the films. So the fact that somebody tried and they were like, Oh, even taking a circle and making a specific shape, they took another circle and took the sphere out of a sphere to make the shape of the indent. That wasn't even a shape that fucking existed on computers until they learned to delete like that. It's crazy. And and, and I will say that I'm, I'm not, I don't have any knocks on the technology, even though it doesn't look anything like, you know, it doesn't look good now, but I will say that it was so revolutionary back in 1982 that the Academy would not uh, nominate them for best visual effects because it was considered cheating exactly. for using a computer. So just yeah. think about that for a second. Matt, your Oopsie. thoughts on Tron. So I Tron. All right. So Tron ha- does have a very basic story. There's a lot about it because I haven't, wa- I hadn't watched Tron in forever until I watched it last night. And there's a lot I can nitpick about it because I was even talking to Brittany before. I I do give the film credit and that it's a very how do I put this? It's a it's a very honest story. Like it wants to be a fun adventure inside the computer, and it's very much as Brittany said. A lot of films copied it because it because like watching it, I very much had this image of like movies from the '90s, like talking about the internet and like, oh, they're hacking yeah. our firewalls, yeah. our subnets are are going down, and you know, using technical terms that like have no real application oh, yeah. to any kind of technology. It's just they heard a word and they're like, oh, this is probably what it means, right? Mm-hmm. So, and yes, the effects do not hold up. And I, I looked it up. I was about two weeks old when this movie came out. So this movie is almost forty years old. And part of me was thinking to myself as I was watching it was like, damn, I kind of wish that they basically remastered it in terms of like its effects, kind of like what they did with the Star Wars back in the day. I know that some people would call 
sacrilege and stuff like that. But part of me would me like to see, <laughs> part of me no, would like you. to see like what a modern like visual effects could do with this stuff and how it would look. You I'd know. watch that. I feel like it would make the rest of the movie worse, though, because like a lot of what they shot to make people look like the programs, they did it, it with that black and white grayscale style to make it look like they were like kind of you know not yeah. from our world. And then on top of that, they it was a lot of that initial like adding, literally doing things via blue and green screen to make the lights like pop through your body. There's sometimes where he turns around and like his crotch is just gone because the shadows were so dark. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like he misses part of his leg for a minute, and then you're just like, oh, I can see through him. Oh, because they were trying these things before they existed. Like, yeah, yeah. A lot of the sets were like painted and done in like certain ways where a lot of it wasn't even real. Like, and it wasn't just miniatures because Star Wars, you can argue, looks better and like holds up better at this time, but that they did miniatures. And that's yeah. why it works, and they saved their, you know, they've added visual effects since then and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, these guys completely invented just shit that people didn't even think could happen, and some of it works, some of it doesn't. But all I, but one of the, because I was talking about this with, I don't know if you were, no, yeah, you were here, Julian, when I, before we started recording, I said to Brittany, like, all I could think of was two things with the scene with Flynn's arcade was first of all, yes. next year that bitch is going out of business because the video game crash of 83 is happening, mm -hmm. and I like young kid Matt loved his little bedroom overlooking yeah, the arcade. Same. I was like, yes, I would we love to have to that. We all wanted to be Kevin Flynn. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. even when, oh man, I mentioned this before, but when he like first tries to like, you know, hack in and like get his information from Encom to really prove that like it's his programs. Cause like that's the suck to run an arcade that plays your, the games that you know you created. And he's just like, I'm not even getting money from this. Yeah. Um, the, the fact that the machine, I know you're going to point out, is behind the fucking desk and then it, like, zaps him into cyberspace. But, like, even the fact that they went, like, they paused him, went frame by frame, just with, like, do-do-do-do-do-do, and, like, zipped out parts of his body and yeah. stuff. Like, that was incredible. And I still like that better than what they did in the newer film when he gets, like, sucked in. No, actually, so, uh, I, like, it's, like, boom, watching boom. that, I thought about that. I was like, that was actually a cooler yeah, effect than what they him. did yeah, yeah in, a... in Tron Legacy. Um, This movie is... Fun. You, you can call it garbage. No, I won't be offended. <laughs> no, I'm not going to call it garbage. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's this. garbage. I don't think it's garbage at all. Is it spectacular by any means? No. Is it spectacular for what it did for visual effects? 100%. Like, this is literally the father of, like, what we have now. I think without Tron, we don't get some of the amazingness that, you know, we see. I mean, you know, say what you will about the actual plot and stuff of Endgame. It's one of the most beautiful you know, digitally VFX, made VFX, yes. Yeah, VFX, you know, sagas ever. Uh except for that time Thanos' sword clips through his body, but they fixed that in post. <laughs> After theaters. Yeah. There was a lot of like stuff. They didn't give people enough time to finish. It's always the final battle scene. Marvel sucks. Oh yeah. They yeah, yeah. they will reshoot shit and then be like VFX artists, you have one month before the movie comes out. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it takes a month to render this. But um I, you know I said this I think about Tron Legacy. I actually really enjoyed the stuff outside of the grid, I think more in, in more so in this movie than inside the grid. I, I liked, you know, um, Flynn hanging out with, um, why am I going to forget his name? Tron? No, yes. Well, Bruce Tron. Bruce Bradley? Yes. But Al Alan Bradley. Alan, Alan yeah, Bradley. With Bradley Alan. or Alan. And then, like I said, the effect of him, like, going in. I mean, Jeff Bridges, even at his young age, was, like, so eccentric and nuts. Yeah. Um, one of the scenes that absolutely drove me crazy, and even Ram, like, I think, like, Ram says it, is, like, how can you just steal a recognizer? And I was like, it seems so ridiculous. And like his movements and some of his, like I made the same complaint about Tron legacy. Some of his cheesy one liners, like oh, he's just, just crazy. Just like took me out of it. I'm like, Oh man, the solar sail Zen, scene was yeah. pretty cool. Once um, again, crazy shapes for the time. But, uh, it really threw me out of the movie when like the elder dude showed up. I'm like, why, why, why? Oh, the why? one that the guardian, that the guardian. Tortured. I'm like, why? Why is Dumont there, was the name? Was the yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. why is oh. this character should not exist? Like, but this when is, the bad guy is torturing him and stuff, uh, I'm just like, yes, this is a good bad guy. <laughs> uh, that just that just killed me. But I mean, yeah, it's it's revolutionary. I I, I love at the end, uh, even though it's cheesy as hell. When like here comes the boss and he's like comes out of the chopper and he's like, I'm the captain now. Like I'm the boss. Yeah. You know. Um, Honestly, I love program. I love. And I, I don't know why, but it, it still gets me because I know I've seen it. But in the opening, when the helicopter has like the red yes, neon, yeah. that, awesome. that looks baller as yeah. hell to me. Because yep. that also was amazing at the time. They're just like, ooh, future. Um, <laughs> I will say that of the two movies, like watching the original one, you only have to see it like one time. 
but it does give you a better appreciation for the sequel that happens because of the sheer amount of like things they kept. Like it's so much of an homage to the original one as much as it is expanding it. So I like how you said that you don't like the grid stuff from this version, mm-hmm. but you like it in the other one because like we have so much better technology that the grid looks like the better, more interesting world. Whereas like the the boring part is the beginning where you're like, I just want him to get into like right. Tron, get into Tron. Yeah, like, yeah. Even though Tron's not a place, it's a person, bitch. That was <laughs> stupid, um, by the way. <laughs> like it's it's stupid because the movie's named Tron and the game is named Tron, mm-hmm. but the guy is named Tron. Like. Because the program is trying because, the because their soul just, is like programmed just, in there. Yeah, I love a little that. bit. Of I the, love that when I was younger that like the person, the employees program that they made and created and put all this love into to make, like ends up being looking like them. I, I shudder to I shudder to think what my my Tron Clue world. is in it. Clues in the beginning. It's the very first part when he's first going oh, yeah. in. Clues at the yeah, beginning of the game. To yeah, get yeah, his stuff yeah. and it looks yep. just like him. Yep. His yeah. little yellow. And yep. he's like, do, do, do. Okay, boss, I got the tank. Let's go. Oh, fuck. The record yep. are coming. Yep. And I'm like. No, Clue is in. Yeah, Clue is in there. That's why I thought it was crazy when I saw the sequel and he was just like, I created Clue. And I was like, again? <laughs> oh, anyway. Man. um, Let's get into it a little bit more here. Um. Much like its sequel, Tron Legacy, Tron was not a box office bomb by any means. Um, it was actually still a, a not a financially... Um, it wasn't a huge hit. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't financially viable for Disney, and they ended up writing up uh, writing off a lot of the costs of the film. Um, and it they was were at, just trying to do their best. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we've talked about it just in our initial thoughts of the film. It was praised for the breakthrough CGI. I mentioned this already. Um, the Academy didn't... Uh, didn't nominate them because they said it was cheating, which is complete bullshit. The Academy obviously. snubs everything. And, so and the I Academy later on gave them one of their lifetime achievements for this film. Um, but why was this so revolutionary? In time? Like what, even though it doesn't look good to us now, like I, I think I kind of mentioned it because it kind of being like the father of like what we see now, like what made this so amazing at the time? I mean, this movie, it it's basically, there's a lot of eighties cheese in it. Not, I mean, not as much as could come later, but once again, this movie was made during the height of the video game, you know, era. Like, cause people, if you're a young, if you're a young kid and I wasn't alive for it, nobody here was, but like, I've read about like, you don't know how big video games like Atari arcade machines and all that shit like that Flint's arcade, that shit actually happened. Oh, yeah. like, there were mm-hmm. arcades yeah. that were hopping with like tons and tons of people just playing yep. shit all night. And this movie basically helped capitalize on that that's essentially to, to me kind of what i view it as it, it it's it was riding the crest of that wave and as i said like literally the next year like it all came crashing down but it's you know like it's it's the new effects it's kind of like when it's like it's it's also to me it's like why the movie avatar is yeah. the highest grossing movie of all time not anymore. even though well yeah because endgame right Ooh. whatever but Avatar for Disney, for man. years was the highest grossing movie of all time because people are like, ooh, look at the effects. I want to go see I it. will just say it right now. You know the only reason Endgame ever surpassed it is because they re-released it in theaters because they weren't going to pass it. You remember they did that, right? Yep, but right so did Avatar. Closed. No, but the, the initial, the first record they set was still because of the initial release. Endgame had to literally, after things were done, they're like, let's ride the wave again because Disney just wanted to be the... Top I mean, I top. don't blame them. I, no, that pissed me off because it's stupid. Like, no, you should just That's be cheating. marked based on your first Your outing. first run? Like, you can't re-release the Titanic again and then count those box office things. It's like, nah, how'd it do in the 90s? Fuck you. <laughs> if it's like a remastered, like, anniversary edition, sh- sh- whatever, if, fine, maybe that counts, but then you put it with, like, anniversary editions, you know what I mean? I thought it was cheap of Endgame to do that. <laughs> okay. And... It was annoying because anyway. they, they, they're fine with second place. There was no reason they needed first. Disney owns them all. They're, it's, they're just the top of the leaderboard. Who the fuck cares? Endgame is a 10 times better movie than Avatar, though. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> before we them, get into the Endgame Avatar debate. Plots and they're really not good. Um, they're both visually stunning. Endgame is amazing. It's a 10 out of 10 movie. And, <laughs> any, but, but Infinity yeah, Wars better. For and once again, is that when you're the trendsetter of, as Brittany said, like a lot of movies copied this in terms of its effects, and because technically all this movie really is is breaking into a corporation and stealing some yep. files. Yeah. It is a heist. Without movie. you could literally just take out the Tron computer elements and just make it about where he goes in, like I'm hacking into the system now, and you, yeah. and do all that crap. But they wanted to do something fantastical with it. And, and it was revolutionary because you're like, wait, people are programs. You can go into a digital world. You can go into the computer. Like, yeah. And there's, and so much media has, 
has emulated Tron and, you know, cause I, I could literally think of several video games, which took the Tron concept and did their own thing with it where, you know, you got pulled into the game and so on and right. so forth. Totally. <laughs> totally. Jesus Christ. And yeah, I will say that even like, it's hard cause I have nostalgia about the first one and you know how nostalgia gives you those like whatever those rose, rose colored glasses, rose colored glasses or, rose tinted or those glasses. emerald colored glasses. If you're a wizard, as wizard of Oz fan, whatever. Jesus. Um, I mean, it's true. They were magical. Um, but yeah, I, I will say that like legacy, I like a lot more because like, you're just able to see like the, the computer world's a lot better in that one. And then you don't want to see much of the real world. You're like, fuck that place. Let's <laughs> go to the computer. Let's go to the grid. The other one still holds that way for me too. Like, I'm like, these characters are fun. The real world. It's kind of wild that he goes on this entire adventure with their, program counterparts and then he comes back and he's just like buddies you don't know like i went through shit with you in the computer world like that's crazy to you explain. were there and yeah. you were there um but i agree when when i know that people watch it now like it, it, it'll always be a lot worse because now you have something better i watch it the opposite way so i was like things can only go up this is amazing but you have a great point though yeah. about but I respect it a, about it giving you a better appreciation for Tron Legacy. It does. Even Next though, time you watch Legacy, yeah, it'll be even better. Even though I don't love the original Tron, and I think it's pretty cheeseball, like, I, I think I even mentioned it when I first started watching it last week, like, the little thing, like, about the door. Yeah. Like, these tiny little things, just is, it's, it's pretty neat. That's a big neat. door. And, and, on, and like you said, Clue at the beginning mm -hmm. is is really There's cool. Lots of little, little so. snacks, little references. <laughs> you know me, I'm all about the lore, so if you reference lore, or you give me little little tidbits into yeah. something else, I'm, mm, um, I'm fed. Now, we could talk about the graphics more and more and more and how they were revolutionary, but uh, that being said... Watch the bonus features on Disney+, Plus if okay. they have them, because the DVD gives you a whole documentary on how they made it, and nice. it's... I want to watch that. Oh. Um, the film was criticized on what, I guess, not all of us can agree, maybe Matt and I, uh, was a pretty incoherent story. Um, is it surprising, despite the film's success as this you know technological, groundbreaking film, that it actually was able to spawn a franchise and later, obviously, Tron Legacy? I mean, so one thing I can, I, and I speak, I speak as a nerd myself is that nerds do not let something go. True. Valid. I mean, when, when nerds latch onto some kind of property, like that bitch is, is not going anywhere. I like, mean, Spawn's coming back again for again. a movie. They're remaking Firefly. Yeah. No. I, well, yes, there's rumored. rumors. Yes, there's rumors they're I'm remaking rumors. Firefly. Rumor that Disney Plus is going to do it, so I'm fucking annoyed. Stop buying shit. Wait, no, because they, they bought Fox. Fox. Yeah, but yeah, there's rumors. Ugh. So once again, like the nerd, and you know, I speaking as a nerd, I love the nerd community to a point, and we fucking suck. <laughs> I work but, in a shop. We suck. But we don't. But the nerd community don't let shit go. There is no. no there is no like. You know what? I would. I would. I don't want to see this property brought back. I would love to for it to just remain in my memories. No. Everybody was always is always like, I want more Star Wars. I want more Tron. I want more like and once again, like I'm not saying that's necessarily a negative thing, but when, you know, it, like as I said, it's it's never gonna they're 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 always gonna give you what you want yeah. because if they know they can make money off of it and uh, that's another thing about the nerd community, they love dropping coin. Oh, like, they, they love dropping that, that money. Oh, like man. merchandise, you know, everything, like outfits, it's it's all there. So yeah, I'm not surprised that the Tron movie, especially yeah. with it being such a cult hit with because, you know, nerds back in the 80s, who because computers weren't really a, much of a thing. No, they, they weren't. weren't even household things yet. No. Yeah, I mean, there there might have been something like, but once again, though, is that computers were the sole propriety of nerds. Yeah. Because if you were... Nerd! Nerd! <laughs> nerd! <laughs> but yeah, so it makes... <laughs> but yeah so it's like nerds who might have been reading about these computers and been like in a couple years there might be one in our house in our house and stuff like that so it doesn't surprise me that this tech savvy movie which let's be fair probably many mainstream audiences would have seen been like oh the effects were amazing and then immediately forgot about it but the nerd community was right. like i love this shit um I'm going to go off topic real quick. Uh -oh. Talking about Proud things. Proud of you. Um, <laughs> Thanks for doing it for once. <laughs> Damn. Uh, he yells at me all the time. All the time. <laughs> uh, because we mentioned Firefly and how nerds hold on to things. Yeah. 
Firefly is one of the cases of nerds holding on to things too long. I agree. Um, Firefly got an ending. It's called Serenity. (laughs) People just need to let Firefly fucking go. Firefly is great. This first season's great. Did we all want more at the time? Yes, goddamn right. But man, do you really want to see these actors back in their roles again after this much time? Like, listen, Nathan Fillion's still a good looking dude. He don't look like Mal Reynolds anymore. And didn't one of the actors um, die? Alan like the Tudyk's character. Book died? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Shepard yeah. Book. No, so well, like, Book dies yeah. and Wash dies. Like, yeah. well, you, yeah. But the actor but I mean, who played Shepard Book did Oh, yeah, die. he dies yeah. so in like, real life. Yeah. And like, it's 15 years too late, like, you know? It's it's over. Just like, I don't want it. Like, but that's I why really if they remake it, though, that's. No, but I don't want it now because, like, they it lives on in comics just like Buffy does. Yeah. Or pursue it in other media. That's maybe, the other thing. Like, if they ever said that they were going to do more whatever. Buffy, I'd be like, Why? no, what? No, no. If maybe if they did a different Slayer, yeah, maybe. like a reboot. Sort but of, like, I don't, I don't need more Buffy. Seven seasons of Buffy, five seasons it was of enough. Angel. Like, I'm good. <laughs> so, like, the yeah. So Tron, Tron lives on. And what's interesting about Tron is that it, mm-hmm. it could keep living on because there's video games and um, there's That's always an interest games. for it and Tron Legacy, and then. It, Tron is actually a really good example of a film not doing well, but doing well enough that they could just kind of keep like banking on it because Tron 3 is now going to be being made. So, yeah. My, my prediction is that comes out next year for the 40 year anniversary of Tron. I hope so. That would be really, or they at least give us a trailer for the 40 year. Yeah. Because yeah. that's going to be a so, lot of work. My thoughts on it, if, are you still going? Uh, I could have kept going, but keep I will going, let you go. Going. No, 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 I could, no, because we got to wrap up. Well, so. I was just going to say, from someone that watched the original Tron before it even being mentioned or rumored that there would ever be a Tron 2, I never, ever expected there to be a Tron 2. And that's something I would have just dealt with the rest of my life. Like, it, it was an interesting concept, but, like, it also has a beginning and an end. Like, it would have been different if he got stuck in that world. And like back then, that then it's like, oh, whatever happened to Kevin Flynn? Flynn lives, and it could have been a whole like campaign like they had later on or whatever. Um, but like, I wasn't expecting it to, and I never would have thought this would be a film that they would make a franchise of. Now that they are doing it, I'm all all aboard. I'm all game. But the fan base was definitely not big enough for I think even the majority of the people that loved it to be like, we need number two. Now, when they dropped that teaser trailer, just to see if there was still interest, because it, it did have a cult following, people just talked about, like, it's technical marvels. Then that's when people were like, well, now that you gave us a taste, we fucking want Tron <laughs> to. So, yeah, I so I'll differ from you guys, and then I'll say that I literally didn't think it, not that it wasn't deserving of a franchise, but never definitely would have thought it, it would have been given the money to do it again and whatever. But Disney did that thing it does. It starts to run out of a, a story, or it's like, oh, it's been this many years since we did this. Let's bring it back. So my guess is that they did the anniversary DVD sales. Let's they probably had more sales that time because people were like, oh, nostalgia, childhood. I remember Tron. I watched it when I was six. Let's renew our intellectual property. Exactly. So they're like, ooh, fresh IP. And they tested it out by giving Square Enix the rights to do it in Kingdom Hearts as a level in Kingdom Hearts 2. And it was around the same time the 25th anniversary DVD came out. Literally like the same year. That's the only reason I watched it and like had both. And then people loved the Tron level in the game because it was cool as shit. People bought the movie I, and they're like, wait, Tron is profitable? They're like I, Ferengi over in Disney. I, they're like, profit? One, one thing also about, the, about Tron that I was kind of like, uh, is... And I know they kind of established the fact that the Flynn character still has feelings for, is it, what was her name? The, uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. They, and her program and like, he, he like kisses her and I'm kind of like, it was really uh, weird. That's, this is kind of awkward, man. Yeah. Like, come on. It's awkward, man. <laughs> this aggression will not stand, stand man. man. That's why she's like, not really a thing in the next movie. Yeah. But yeah. some people had a problem with that too. Cause they're just like, you didn't include all the original kids. Um, I think she does have a cameo. In it. Let's let's give our rating for the original Tron out of <laughs> five. You guys go first. Five <laughs> recognizers. You can, you can go. I'm going to give it a three out of five because of its visual, you know, re- like revolution that it that it had. There are some really fun moments. I love Jeff Bridges. He can do no wrong on my part. There's some really cheesy acting and some really just like what the hell's going on on the grid. Like this makes no sense stuff, but it's fun. I don't ever need to watch it again, but it was a lot of fun. Like I will go back and watch Tron Legacy a million times, Yeah, but I'm, I'm done with 1982. You sound like everybody in my family. They're like, I watched Tron once with you. I'm going to watch Tron Legacy 80 times, but not Tron again. <laughs> Anytime I'm watching in my house and I'm like sitting alone on the couch, like somebody walks in, they're like, oh God, she's watching Tron. And they just like walk away. 
So I'm kind of bouncing between a three and a 3.5 just because, I mean, once again, I could nitpick this movie because there's some parts where I was like, God damn it. Where when they're breaking in, like Jeff Bridges is acting like, yeah, he's like, <sighs> he's like creeping along. He's like prancing almost. Yeah, and I'm just like, like, mm-hmm. I'm like this dude could literally go to prison if he gets arrested and he's acting like there, he doesn't give a shit. No, that was the yeah. fact that the laser that sends him into the grid is apparently pointed at her desk. She's with it behind her. Cause he did the same thing in Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase <laughs> and, <laughs> and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. See, Honey, I, Sh- I we we talked about know, this before. Is like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids makes sense because it was a he's a home inventor, not a multi billion dollar corporation. Just leaving that, laser beams around. That's yeah. why it was behind that really big door. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> don't open the really big door if you don't want to get zapped into the grid. I don't know. <laughs> As I said, I thought that what was going to happen because I hadn't seen it in so long. I thought he was going to like security would like find out he was in the building and would be looking for him and he would hide and he would actually be in the path of the laser and such yeah, like that. Like, Whoop, like an yeah. Accident. And then the master control program would be like, I got you now, bitch. You're like, nah. zoom and hit him. But cyber chase. So I'll split the difference. I'll go 3.25. <laughs> I know okay. you like my fractions. Not really. Decimals. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is uh, go. Oh, Brittany has to give hers. No, she's not allowed. Julian I was gonna loves end to move show. on without me. I do. <laughs> a lot. So then I'm like, now it's my turn. I want. I want Brittany. To I think give he's her. used to me always talking first. So then I when am. I save it for the end, he's like, and moving on. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very accurate. Uh, um, Brit, five out of five. Yeah, no. Shit. You know, <laughs> like, know, like we didn't know, know that was coming. <laughs> five out of five because nobody will love Tron as much as me, and I'm fine with that. I That's why I was going to cut you off and just go to credits. I was like, just give it a five out of five. For Brittany, you give guys, it a five you credits. You guys just don't have a clue how oh, much man. this movie's trying to mean to me. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God, we better end. We will be back. You better next recognize week. her, how much she loves this movie. Recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Uh, oh, God. Are we finished yet? <laughs> uh, all right, before I run out of buttons, He's getting it, space is, it is the <laughs> end of line, man. So, for Matt and Brittany, I'm Julian. We will see you next week. Have a good night. You can find Everything is Permitted on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Everything is Permitted is produced by Rob Bigliaccio, Nikki Vizi, and Geneva Stein Shivers. Our executive producers are Michael Cox, Brittany Tomes and the Tomes family, and Julian Brown. <laughs>